Think about it. If you don't come to the rehearsal, then you have no idea what's going to happen on the day of. The rehearsal was just as important. We often go, oh, yeah, you know what? It'll just, it'll be important when it happens. Well, how do you know? You don't know when it's going to happen. That's the thing. We don't know when this is going to happen. Our job is to be prepared. Multiple years, this was years ago, back when we first began and the church was this way, sideways. I shared a vision with you guys that I had in the middle of the night. And it was a dream. It wasn't a vision. It was a dream. I was asleep. But it re it, to this day, it has always stuck with me. Stuck with me. Can't get it out of my heart. That's when you know they're really from God. Because it's not something you forgot. It's not something you made up. I was totally unconscious when I had this dream. And um, I'm, I'm laying there, and I saw a woman in her bridal gown, and it was gorgeous. I mean, nothing I've ever seen before. I mean, maybe you could find it on something similar. I don't know. It was amazing. Gorgeous dress, and she was totally decked out, hair up, makeup, just, just ready to go. And she stood there for quite a period of time. In fact, I was watching her. And it, the longer she stood there, the longer she got weary and tired. Now, I don't know, you know, men don't really understand this because you guys have never worn a wedding dress with all the petticoats and the hoops and the, any woman, and Ricky works with around this stuff with drama. So you know what I'm saying. It's just layers. And you, and you can only hack it so long that the weight of it, and it just begins to get heavy. And it's very easy to get weary. And she got weary and she got tired and she was sick of waiting and she started to complain and finally she just turned and she hollered at her her you know bridal party get me out of this thing i'm done and they unzipped her and they started doing all the little buttons. And I'm talking one of these antique dresses that, the, the, you know, nowadays we cheat. The, the little buttons look like they're really buttons. They're not. It's just fake over the zipper. No. I'm talking they were undoing her. And it took her quite a while to get out of it, but she eventually got out of it. What saddened me, and I, I actually woke up from the dream crying. She went behind this little... You know, those little things, and you go behind it, and you change. What she came out dressed in made me weep. It was like these really gnarly jeans that were just rags. And I'm not talking a little bit of hole and a little bit of, not something that somebody made looking stylish. I'm talking it looked like somebody took this and put it through a cheese grater and then stuck it on her legs. She comes out in these just rags, and they were filthy and this old, nasty, white T-shirt that wasn't even white anymore. It had that dinge to it. And it was sweaty, and it was gross. She still had her hair up, and she still had her makeup on. she go, there, that's better, but that's comfortable. And she sat on the bed and just kind of, I guess I'm just going to sit here and wait. And eventually, she got sick of waiting, and she left. And I was like, Lord, that was the weirdest dream. What's wild is dreaming it. I knew exactly what the Holy Spirit was saying to me. I woke up in tears. I said, Holy Spirit, that was, ow. Oh, man, that, that must wound you that the church has done that. And this was five years ago, six years ago. I saw the church really change. And... It really affected me. And yet, this is what Jesus says to us in, in Luke chapter 21. He said to watch the fig tree. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is at hand. That's verse 31. Verse 32, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not. 34, and take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts become overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the cares of life, 
Now, I'm reading this from the New King James. Let me read it from what it says in the Amplified. But take heed to yourselves and be on your guard, lest your hearts be overburdened and depressed, weighed down. So that's what I saw. She instantly began to get weighed down by the care of in the waiting. With the giddiness and headache and the nausea, nausea of self-indulgence, the drunkenness and the worldly worries and cares, pertaining to the business of this life, unless that day come upon you suddenly like a trap or a noose. It's one thing for the day of Christ calling us home to come upon us, and it's, you know, we're ready for it. It's another thing for it to be a trap or a noose to us. Do you hear those words? I don't want to be this, you guys. I don't want to be caught off guard, but more than just caught off guard, I don't want to be caught in a dirty outfit. I don't want, I want to have my righteous gown on. I want to be prepared. There's a big difference between that side of the table and that side. There's a big difference if I went and dumped my purse out on that other side of the table and messed it up real good. You know, it's one thing to come to the house and the table's just empty. It's another thing to come to the house and it looks like, okay, really? You didn't know I was coming? Are our lives like that? Do we know that Christ is going to come and call us home? Do we understand that we're his bride? You know, we're his bride. And he's coming for a prepared bride. 